Today we're going to talk about unicameral bone cysts with a pathological fracture. This is the case of a 19-year-old patient that presented to the ER with shoulder pain after minor trauma. On initial radiographs, we see a well-defined loosened lesion throughout the proximal humeral diaphysis and metaphysis, and there is a fracture at the level of the proximal metaphysis with cortical discontinuity. Because of the underlying lesion, a CT was ordered. On the CT scan, we can clearly see the cystic lesion within the proximal humerus. There is endosteal scalloping and thinning of the cortex. Important, the lesion extends beyond the physis. Also, because of the fracture, there is a large hemarthrosis within the glenohumeral joint. Please note that there is no periosteal reaction in this examination and there is no evidence of matrix production. MRI of this patient with T1 and T2 fat suppressed images show a large intraosseous lesions within the proximal humerus, which extends from the diaphysis, metaphysis, and into the epiphysis. The lesion crosses the growth plate. There is no normal bone trabecula between the lesion and the physis. This lesion shows a combination of increase and decrease T1 and T2 signal intensity related to fracture and hemorrhage within the lesion. That is the increased T1 signal intensity, which is related to methemoglobin. Usually, these lesions show decreased T1 signal intensity and increased T2 signal intensity in the absence of fracture. There is an associated glenohumeral hemarthrosis due to the fracture. There is no surrounding mass and there is no periosteal reaction. If there was contrast in this examination, we would see peripheral thin contrast enhancement, but no central enhancement. Unicameral bone cysts are also known as simple bone cysts. Usually happens in pediatric young patients. It's very common at the proximal humerals, although it can happen in any other bones, such as the proximal femur. But 50 to 60% happen in the proximal humerals. These lesions are non-aggressive, are well-defined, they have a narrow zone of transition and show endosteal scalloping. There is no cortical breakthrough or periosteal reaction unless it's fractured and there is no surrounding mass. Also, this lesion happens in the metaphysis. The classification is between active and latent and it's important to note the classification in imaging because it varies in treatment. Active lesion will extend all the way to the physis and a latent lesion will find normal bone between the lesion and the physis. Um, the treatment is non-operative for active lesions with aspiration and uh, methylprednisolone acetate injection, uh, although it has to be done several times, and operative will be curettage and bone graft for latent cysts that does not extend into the physis. The differential diagnosis would include a aneurysmal bone cyst or a telangiectatic osteosarcoma, although they look different on cross-sectional imaging. Uh, Aneurysmal bone cysts usually have fluid-fluid levels, which we don't see on unicameral bone cysts unless they've been fractured.